Hey, y'all. That new jam in there. I know, right? <laughs> Hi, everybody. We are the Sci Fi Sisters, and we are so happy to be here with you today, part of Virtual TrekCon 3. Woohoo! Yay! Yeah. VTC! VTC! <laughs> <laughs> we are so happy. We're delighted. Everybody's back from the cruise. The family's back together. And we yeah. have an exciting, what we think is an exciting panel and probably going to be pretty controversial. And we hope that you guys are chatting along with us and start to put down your choices too, because what we are bringing to you today is the Sci-Fi Sisters Star Trek Top 10, bum, bum, the women. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, really quickly, does anybody have any comments about the process that we went through to get this top 10? <laughs> yes, I, I knew <laughs> Sabrina. <laughs> Why did we do this to ourselves again? again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Again. Yes. Again. It was it was it was something. It was it, I think we're we're pretty good at it right now. Um <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yelling and screaming and bitching and moaning at each other. Yeah, we're yeah. Good. yeah mm -hmm. I think we're yeah, I think we're really good <laughs> at yelling at each other and yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, good to see the chat pack in the house and yeah. everybody else from the mothership too. What's yeah. up, y'all? Hi, hi David. Is in the house. <laughs> David Gregory. Yes. Hi, David. hi, David. Hi, Anne-Marie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we could go on this list forever. We got a, we got a lot of our friends in the house. Hi, Portia. Yeah. Hello, hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. Scott. Oh, that's my boy, Scott. Okay, so let's get down to it. Okay. The Sci-Fi Sisters, top 10 Star Trek women, right? Yep. And so this list, I think that people might have some preconceived notions about who we might have chosen for our top 10. And I think that you all might be pretty pleasantly surprised and pretty shocked by who some of these people are. So as we're going to we start were. as we were, right? <laughs> All right, we are going to start with number 10. Who do you all think number 10 is? Before you roll it, Yvette, I want to see if anybody has any guesses out there in the chat about who you think is starting off at number 10. Who you think, we think, that you think is our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luz. <laughs> Okay. Wardog, my brother. Nurse right. Chapel, Torres. Those are some good guesses. Mm, to Paul. That's another good guess. Okay. Are you ready to do the reveal? Bev Crusher. All right. Ta da, Linda. Yes. You are correct, baby. It is Beverly Crusher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beverly Crusher. All right. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, uh, I'm gonna let uh, Yvette speak to why Beverly Crusher is our number ten. Well, I, I believe that Beverly Crusher, and I think there are a few, most of us did. Um, Beverly is a commander. She, um, you know, she's she's really brilliant. Uh, she's a mom, and she is Wesley's mom. People forget that she raised Wesley. You know, Jack wasn't around. He died when Wesley was five. And from what we know, he wasn't really around even when Wesley, even when he was alive. So basically Beverly is the is the genius, you know, and she raised another genius. Um, she destroyed a Borg ship. She was a commander way before Riker was. So he's only her commander or her boss because of his title. Um, and I just love that Beverly has... She's not going to take Picard shit. She doesn't take anybody's, you know, she's going to do her thing. You know, even if she's in trouble, she's going to take it and just go with it. But she does have a good moral center. Uh, she's a brilliant doctor. And I think that she doesn't get the do that she needs. Um, and I'm glad that we, we added her to the list. 
Yes, we added her to the list after much consternation and argument. But <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but she I mean, still deserves to be on the list. I, she deserves to be on this list. Yeah. I, I am not uh -oh. particularly a huge Beverly Crusher fan, but mm -hmm. the reason why I acquiesce to her being on the, the list is that we what we talked about in our fracas last night, the, um, that Beverly actually, like you said, she was a commander mm -hmm. before Riker. She was sitting in that seat. And I love the idea that she was the one that inspired Troy to go on and become a qualified commander. Not right. Riker, but Beverly. Yeah. So that's why I give Beverly props. She was a woman who mentored another woman. Yep. Yeah. Like okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fran grudgingly. Hi, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So it's Beverly right. Crusher, number 10. I was I was cool with Beverly. Like I was I was cool with Beverly. She almost got knocked off the list, but I kept her. What? So yeah. Yeah. Because she, yeah, she deserves to be up. I feel like she deserves to be up there. All right, so moving on to number nine. Any guesses who we have for number nine? Throw them out there now. Okay, I'm getting a bunch of number nine, number nine. Ready? All right, okay, we're going to reveal number nine Jadzia Dax. Number nine is Jadzi. Oh, we had some good guesses. Guinan, yeah. Kess, Troy. Troy. Mm -hmm. Kess. <laughs> Our number nine is Jadzi Adapt. When she was a controversial choice amongst uh, to make the top 10 uh, mm -hmm. amongst the sisters, but mm -hmm. some of us fought for her. My yes. myself is one of them. <laughs> Fran being another. Fran, you want to talk about why you wanted Jadzia? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I thought she was cool brilliant you know i thought she was really smart um she stood up for rights and she stood up to uh wharf uh, she married wharf um and she was just you know i liked it when she um she kept her word the blood oath with the other klingons and also in the beginning of ds9 curzon had we thought curzon had did something really bad and curzon didn't Somebody else did, but she kept, she didn't tell. She she kept the word and she didn't tell. She knew that Curzon was with this other lady when this attack happened, mm -hmm. so he couldn't have did it. She 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 stands up for herself and she's I like her integrity, and I also like the fact I loved her uh, friendship with uh, Cisco. I love that, you know, and it was just I just loved her as a woman, and she didn't care how you looked whatever okay so she <laughs> dated the guy with the transparent skull because she didn't care how you look so that was it you know it's like oh come on that's so superficial and 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 kira kira's like oh no transparent skull no oh uh, no but I I'm, with, I'm with kira that she didn't care how you looked it was that weird things attracted her <laughs> but i think it's a little bit right. more no, I think I think I don't she think it was even. I don't think she. I think surfaces stuff didn't matter to her. Right. Stuff didn't matter. To All right. Her. So we'll go yeah. back. But she didn't care how you look. Yes, she does. She does. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then one of the That's... other things was, I don't know if this is her or not, but when her when the guy came for the blood was it blood oath when he came he said Curzon my old friend and she says. <laughs> I'm Jasia now. And he says, Jasia, my old friend. That touched my heart. That really touched my heart. He, yeah. Yeah, he missed a like beat. That's, that's you know? not her. That's like, the no, character. But, but that's that with that character, mm -hmm. it, it, it mattered to a lot of people. Yeah, no, it does. It totally it does. I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying that's not one of the I love that moment too. But it's not one of the reasons why I chose Jadzia to be on my list because that was the reaction of another character that was saying a lot about with this other character that made me love him a lot more, you mm -hmm. know. And I think that, but I think that, I mean, Jadzia, she's just too cool. Like when yeah. I was coming up, um, I didn't have uh, any black women role models like Jadzia, 
and Kira, like Jadzia uh, and Kira had to fill that void for me. Like they were kicking ass and taking no names, especially when they started writing Jadzia so much stronger yeah. and more confident and less like of a dingbat, you know, because yep. they had her like play ditzy for so long. And I'm like, At she's first. As, and mm -hmm. right at first, right, and then like as was mentioned in the chat, like she has lifetimes of wisdom. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know this is not a dingbat. You know, like she's yep. she's got some gravitas. You know, so I I was um, a huge Jadzia fan. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, well, um, you know that wasn't it wasn't the character, but they used the character to get the point across that who you are on the inside doesn't, you know, it matters. Mm -hmm. You're still the same, the same person. If you change the surface, the inside counts. Yeah. So, right. And yeah, they used, right. used her to do that. Mm -hmm. I think Jezia had to be on this list because um, she means so much to so many Star Trek fans. You know what I mean? She is the reason why we love Trills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, I, when I think of Trill, I think of Jadzia. I don't think of anybody else. You know, I only think of Jadzia. So, and the fact that they, I can't even watch, um, like when, when, when the last episode of season six comes on, for some reason, I always forget until like, oh, there's like this one point when she's talking to Bashir about having a baby and I'm going, oh crap, this is the one. <laughs> this is that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Once, you know, if I even watch it to the end, I have to take a break from DS9, breathe, and maybe two days later, I'll go back and finish uh, season seven. Because till, still to this day, it still hits me wrong because it was wrong. The way they killed her, it was just wrong, you know. Um, ugh. <laughs> it was wrong. We agree, but we need to move on right. because we only have a short period of time and we've got eight more women to get through who are all phenomenal and even and continue to get more amazingly phenomenal. But you're right, because I'm still holding a grudge and I will never forgive them. Ever, Me too. Ever, Ira. ever, 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 ever. Getting, ever. Rid, of my, getting rid of my girl. Right. All right. Who do y'all think is at number eight? Dun, 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 dun. Number eight, number eight, number eight. You're never gonna get it. I can't. I'm waiting to ready? see some guesses out there. I'm ready. I'm gonna say number eight, y'all. Okay, we got a guess with Troy. Oh. I already put it. Number eight is Captain Freeman. Captain Freeman. Captain Freeman. I see Paul, Ro, Torres, Kira. Those were oh, look, Waxana. Those were all good guesses. Thank you, Luz. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna sing it. Um, <laughs> but our number eight is Captain Freeman. And Yvette, you have some really compelling argument for why Captain Freeman is included in this list and why she's so important. And she was a unanimous choice, y'all. Yep. So I wanted Captain Freeman to be on this list because I wanted, I didn't want her to get left out because in the short time that Lower Decks has been on, she's been in every single episode. Um, she is a fierce captain. She's a captain that was a captain, a black cat female captain that was not dead when we met her. Um, she has a she has the a, a, a admiral, her husband's an admiral, and they have a daughter that they're trying to, you know, save from herself. So they're a they're a, a intact family, black family, a power couple um in Starfleet. And she does the damn thing. You know, no matter what people think of her ship or her command, she does that damn thing every single week. And I know it's supposed to be about Mariner and Boimler and the other two, but Captain Freeman comes, comes, she comes, comes correct every single episode. And I did not want her to be um, left out of this because she is a fierce captain. I mean, she she doesn't leave anything to chance. She is she's a powerhouse, as some some people are saying in the chat. Definitely, uh, she said, "I am a great cap. I am a great captain." Yep. But um, now I'm the one that didn't. I was the one that was really kind of lukewarm about animated series in general. So, <laughs> I, you know, I've come around. So please don't yell at me in the chat. But um, <laughs> what I love about Captain Freeman, like you said, and I, I'm. You know, I was voting for Captain Freeman, which surprised even me. But uh, I love the fact that she's voiced by Dawn Lewis. 
Yes. That was like, shout that out is, to yes. Dawn. You know, that yes. is coming back to, you know, a different world. Different I'm world, baby. Woo. So it's I a love different that. different world. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Then where so, you come from? <laughs> <laughs> and I okay, love okay. I'm, that I'm today. Captain mm-hmm. Freeman is someone who knows that she's the bomb. Right. But she's not being perceived as that. And her struggle is trying to say, like, why am I never getting the, you know, the, the kudos and the attention? Or why do they treat my ship like this? We yeah. could do so much more. I love that part of her story. And yeah. I, I think that that's why we, I, that's why I put her on the list. Jalisa, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Mm-hmm. Yes, she played our girl. <laughs> so that's why I said yes to Captain Freeman. Yeah. And I want somebody to explain that last episode to me. So, you know, I'm well, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, there's a lot, but I, I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the I doubt. Am, I'm going to just, because it, it, it hasn't let me down yet. Unlike yeah, exactly. And with mm-hmm. some series, but I'm going to move on. Yeah, okay. We're going to move on. on. That's right. We're going to move on. We're not going to go there today. Okay. Because <sighs> feeling the love. I just want everybody to note that I'm not shy about saying what my favorite series is, period. So there you go. Anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, number seven. I bet you all oh, are going to be sorry. surprised <laughs> by number <didn't>. seven. <laughs> Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Number seven is a tie between two very important women to the Star Trek franchise, DC Fontana and Jerry Taylor, two women that we could not leave out of this list because DC Fontana started that doing the thing for us when we fun- didn't have any other voice represented mm-hmm. uh, in those in those production meetings and in the writer's room or to Gene Roddenberry. To say, yes, Jean, I love your vision. It's sacred to me too, but I'm also going to bring along my sisters with me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, DC Fontana is everything for us, right? Mm-hmm. And then Jerry Taylor mm-hmm. picked up that torch and carried it so well mm-hmm. uh, throughout the TNG era. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we love her because even when Gates McFadden was fighting the sexism behind the scenes, Jerry Taylor had her back and gave us some of the most memorable TNG stories that, um, you know, so we, we love uh, some Jerry Taylor. She's a living legend. And yeah. I mean, I think we're really blessed that um, she's still with us. And um, so mm-hmm. she was even at um, one of the last things that we participated in um, mm-hmm. for yeah. the, the mm-hmm. Hollywood food mm-hmm. coalition yeah. tell, for and raiser. Mm-hmm. So it's amazing. So that's, that's the, our choices there. Anybody else have anything further to add oh. about DC Fontana yeah. and Jerry Taylor? DC yeah. wrote my favorite TOS episode, Journey to Babel. Yeah. yeah. And I love, that's my favorite TOS episode. And she gave us so much and she packed so much in that episode. It was just amazing. So, and you know, remember now, this was back in the 60s. Yeah. You know, she was a pioneer. She was a woman writer. And we know how she, the reason why she's called DC Fontana, because she couldn't be you know, submit her stuff under Dorothy. So mm-hmm. she had to use her initials. And that's, you know. That's when she I was living. Hmm? Yeah. That's the time she was living in. That's how yes, bad it was. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. and Jerry Taylor, you know, was instrumental on Voyager, mm-hmm. you know, with the uh, with the woman lead there. So I, I liked her. Yeah. Remember, Jerry right. Taylor is the one that gave us the marquee. She wrote she both wrote of those the, episodes. She did write okay. the marquee. And I'm not going to hold that against her. Okay. Uh, listen, that was a long <laughs> story arc. That, went it, that was. That was a very long way. story arc. Yes, yeah. it did. And, yeah. and it had some great payoff. Yeah, well, A lot yeah. of good characters came out of the marquee. That's and right. DC Fontana was a big inspiration for me when I was younger. I mean, I used to write my name S.L. Williams, which was my maiden name. Uh, for years because I so love DC Fontana and she wrote one of my favorite Star Trek episodes, the Enterprise Incident, mm, which had one favorite, of yeah. my favorite yeah. characters. I would have put her on another list of one one off characters, the Romulan commander. Yes. And if you if you yes. look, the Romulan commander had been one of the best the best characters I ever saw. Cat's paw, she wrote Charlie X. I mean come on. She wrote the yeah. ultimate she did the teleplay for the ultimate computer. The original script of the Ultimate Computer was all about the computer, and DC turned it around and made it about Kirk losing his power to the computer and made it a whole different story. So, yes, DC Fontana, Jerry Taylor, we had to put him down. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And uh, uh, hopefully, um, 
Nana Visitors uh, project will help shine a light on all these women, a, a much deserved light. I can't wait yeah. for her project, The Women of Trek, uh, to come out because yeah, we uh, we're going to be all over that. Yep. So moving right along, number six, it's only getting better, y'all. I can't, I really got to know who you all think is uh, number six. Uh, okay, <laughs> thanks. Don't, don't click it yet. Sorry. Trigger finger over there. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, and she brought in Daystrom, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. No, Who do no you all guesses? think is a no guesses. no guesses for number six? Okay, I see seven of nine, Tasha. Two two Ooh. seven of nines. And two Tasha. Wow. Kalana. Oh well, one Tasha, yeah. Ganana. Who's Ganana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Anne Marie. <laughs> and Troy. Here. Seven. Wow, there's some there's some heavy seven love out there. Okay. okay. Our um our number six choice is Majel Barrett. And no how Barrett. we name her. Yes. Right. Majel okay. Barrett Roddenberry. She is the queen. Yes. You know, and we owe so much to her. First of all, she put up with Jean. Hey. <laughs> she, you know, like that's number one. <laughs> and she helped she helped corral that that genius into and funnel that into our our check that we love right oh, so yeah. that's number one she's a woman gets props every day for that yeah, yeah <laughs> for me uh. <laughs> and she said she was the first woman that we saw in a star trek really if you did it chronologically yeah, if you did That's it right. chronologically, yeah. if you did it chronologically, she's the first woman as number one. I mean, yeah, number one. one. Mm -hmm. yes. She was the number one. And she was I kicking it. it as number one too. Like, I mean, she was not playing a docile little lamb. Like, nope. she was, she was in full control up there. She, I mean, I think Riker studied under her. You know, like because <laughs> I got some. You know, she was like, I'm number one. You know, you notice that swagger that she has. Yeah. In that episode, yep. she's amazing. She's amazing. That's that's episode. That is um so I love um Major Barrett because of everything. You know, she's just she is everything. I mean, she is the voice of the computer, she is Nurse Chapel, you know, she is Laxana Troy, who I adore. Um yes. because she gives two shits about nothing. <laughs> Except for Deanna. And nothing. that's the way it should be. She only that's cares right. about Deanna, and that's it. And I love mm -hmm. that about her. And the fact that um, I never liked TOS until the cage came out while uh, TNG was on. And when I saw that, I was like, who is, who is that? What, what is that? Who, what? There's a number one? <laughs> Wait, what is going on? And I was hooked, mm -hmm. you know, and I, cage was the only TOS episode I would watch. <laughs> I would watch it over and over and over again. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I still watch it all the time. So you know, I, I love Majel for just everything. She is, and when she plays Loxana, I'm just done. So I love her. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Dark, dark Page. Yeah. I, oh, I love Dark Page. That's so good. Yeah. She, yeah. she she don't, like you say, she she don't care. She's going to be Loxana Troy. She's going to say what she want to say. Yeah. And I think a lot of times she was hitting uh, Picard on the nose when she said, oh, Jalou, go start. <laughs> I don't think she was making up all of that. Oh no, she wasn't making up nothing. She was reading. I don't think she was making up anything. You know, I think he, he got all indignant and everything. Like she yeah. was like, "Oh, I, you know. I'm like, yeah, you there." <laughs> like John Luke, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love Major Barrett because after Gene's death, she kept Star Trek going. And she did That's a lot right. with his other works that she had um, privy, she was privy to. So, you know, the other series, I can't remember the name of the other series that came out after his death and she was responsible for getting that up and on. So mm -hmm. uh, Major Barrett Roddenberry, I love her. Yeah. I mean, this is a, oh, thanks, Melissa. We think it's, <laughs> we, we did give it some thought. Uh, and, and a lot of debate, but that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call it thought. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was an argument. Nope. It was no. debate. It was a very strong debate. <laughs> Andromeda. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Wardogheim. Okay. So we're, this is perfect. We're running along 
time wise perfectly because we're halfway through the list Mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure that number five is going to shock (laughs) everybody i think my personal i think this is going to be the shock of the list uh so y'all what are your number five guesses i'm not even gonna look because they're not gonna get it (laughs) i know i know i know know. they're not gonna get it we were challenging you guys we don't think you guys are gonna get it but (laughs) Remember, we think outside hear. of the box because we're the South mm-hmm. <laughs> Not yet. Not Janeway. Not like Cass. <laughs> I've seen Cass up here a lot. I have cold, I think of, cold, getting warmer, warmer, I, cold, cold. I, I, have, a, I have a Lugie, feeling that Luce is going to oh. be with, really upset with us. Number five Lugie. goes to Melissa oh, yeah. Longo. It is Kai Wayne, Kai baby. Wayne. It is Kai Kai Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. The Longo. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is Kai yep. Wynn. Kai Wynn yeah. made a win. top ten. <laughs> I mean, and a lot of these, a lot of these guesses are on one of our personal lists, but did not make our collective sci-fi sisters list. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't feel discouraged if you do not see your favorite on the list, or or do and 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 write us and yell at us. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Kai Wynn, I put Kai Wynn on my list. And I, the reason that I put it on is because when I started thinking about the characters that left an impact on me throughout the years that I continue to think about all the time, that I continue to have a strong reaction to every time I see the episode, mm-hmm. is Kai Wynn. Yep. You can't deny the power of this one plus like not only was she just a louise fletcher just played her so well as as a bad woman you know as a villain but she was complex and she was a powerful woman in her own right and she wasn't truly evil she was just very selfish and power driven and she was very much i saw her as very much a a politician but Mm -hmm. she had gained so much in her career you know, she had accomplished quite a bit and she did ultimately do, I mean, not ultimately, but throughout her time in her position, still try to do some good for the Bajoran people. Like she wasn't a dictator, for instance, you know, uh, for most of her career. She made sure that her people were fed and well kept and still tried to talk on their behalf. So that's why Kai Wen was my choice that she had to be on the list. Yeah. And Any other thoughts on Kai Wen? And... She was a space Karen, for sure. If there's a space Karen, it's Kai Wynn. She didn't know that she was on the parade side instead of the prophet side until the end. Because I think the decision she made was parade-ish, parade-ish instead of prophet. Because they never spoke to her. She said that. She said they have never spoken to me. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons why she was so jealous and envied Cisco yep. as being an emissary and they spoke to him. But Space Karen, that's her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's another reason why she's on here. I, Kai, I think. He, I mean, you, is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm finished. I'm done. Uh, Kai Wynn is on my list and the vet's list for the same reason. Mm-hmm. And it's the, the episode when the power race came to the station to have the reckoning. And to this day, I cannot watch that episode without having a major meltdown over the fact that here was Cisco ready to give up his son. Mm -hmm. Here was Kira ready to give up her life. Everybody believed in the prophets except this bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Alone. We would have Cisco, and it's all her goddamn fault. And that's why I hate Kai Wynn. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so true because it's it's. I mean, it's what thirty years, <laughs> and we're right? still pissed still mad. at her. <laughs> we're mad at, at her. her. We are of. still pissed at her character. I mean, Louise Fletcher Fletcher is a phenomenal actress. <laughs> That we are still really pissed off at this cap, this damn character. I mean, when I see her, if I start a, a I watch season five, season five of Deep Space Nine constantly. So you know, when I see her show up, I, I can, I, I have a actual physical reaction to her seeing her face <laughs> on the screen. You know, like these little prickles. I'm like, oh, this bitch. 
<laughs> you know, it's like, oh, but, you know, she she makes an impact. You know, she her arc is incredible, you know, and she is not the star of the show, but it does. It's not the same show without her. That's for sure. Mm -mm. My <laughs> child. And she would <laughs> throw that out there. And it sounded like but she poison. said it was such grace. You know, yeah. so I don't think it was grace. She had such. She had that was sweet venom. voice. My child. I thought it was venom, too. I didn't think yeah. it was grace. Definitely venom. <laughs> My child. And every time she did that to Kira, she Poor was like, dog. I want to hit this woman in her throat. <laughs> 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 Okay. Yep. Well, All right. we've dropped I'm, I'm, that bomb. Yes, War Dog. Right. I was just a little upset about. I know. Halloween. Sabrina, calm down. Here you go. <laughs> feel that? You feel that? Okay. Mm -hmm. That reckoning happened, bitch. You would have been. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Oh. Moving along. Mm -hmm. Number four. Guesses for number four. Throw them in. Hot and heavy, y'all. Who do you think number four is? Because it's starting to get tight now. We only have four spaces left. Or spaces. There's a lot of women in Star Trek. And I know some of y'all are starting to get antsy. Like, where is my woman? Where is my girl? <laughs> where are my peoples? Oh, there are so many people being Raffy, on this Kira, list. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, right. hey, look at that. There were a lot of choices. Raffy, a lot, but look at but look who 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 wins though. How many people are saying Kira? Guess what? Y'all are right. Number four is Kira, baby. None other than Colonel Kira Nerese. Nerese, Nerese, Nerese. The one and only. And she is the best. I mean, if I could have uh, picked a, she was my role model, like growing up. She was uh, straight up, you know, and especially I met, you know, when, when Deep Space Nine was on, I was, um, you know, uh, in my college years and, um, defiant and felt like ooh, revolutionary like power to the people mm -hmm. you know like all the time you know that was like you know down with the system down with the man power <laughs> to the people like Kara was my girl man Kara straight up she was she fighting for it but then you know she went through this incredible arc and then that I got to see as she was going through this arc that it gave it, it it sort of gave me permission to grow and to soften and to not be scared of change too like Kara mm -hmm. Kara's the shiggity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she was you she was a unanimous choice. <laughs> Louise said end of list. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Kira scene is when she is trying to tell them, um, I think the Cardassians that she was gonna blast them out of their face that foot on that station. And he said to her. The Romulans, the Romulans, yeah. <laughs> and O'Brien looked up at her after she cussed these people out and said, remind me never to play poker. Never to play poker. That you. was the Admiral. The Admiral said that. The Admiral oh, said the Admiral, that. There was so many. Know, somebody. <laughs> it was so but many. Kira, Kira had nothing in her hand, and she was like, oh, yeah. You I'll mess you up. up. I'll mess you up. With nothing. <laughs> Man, the best scene ever is her late, oh, strapped to that bed, pregnant. Telling that fool that she was gonna kill him, <laughs> right? And she, I'm like, you ain't got nothing. You strapped, but she was determined. And guess what? He's dead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite was when she put that beat down on Damar. That's my favorite. Too. <laughs> that's what I was that gonna say, friend. Beat down on Damar. <laughs> <laughs> and I also read an uh, uh, interview where well, the guy, Casey Biggs, that played it, played the part, he wasn't too, too thrilled to be beat up by her like that. And when she was on, when we did the thing, she said she did hear that. She did, she mm -hmm. did know that he wasn't satisfied with that storyline. But she put a beat down on him. He looked like he had been kicked in the, man, in the head with a mule when she finished him because he should have kept his hands off of that child. You know, he had no business doing that. And she put a beat down on him. He deserved it. So yes, I loved it. Yes. Casey Biggs is in a big club of people that got beat down by Akira. So <laughs> not alone. <laughs> yes. He should be, you know, uh, uh, he's among great company. Yes, he is. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. We're Thank getting you. to the tight spots, y'all. 
<laughs> Jamar looks so shame. He got a bumpy eye. <laughs> <laughs> he had a straight up bumpy eye. <laughs> he sure did. He had a straight up bumpy head. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, you got beat by a girl. <laughs> Again. That's right. He sure did. <laughs> okay. Oh Number three. Who do you all think made our top three? We're going to start with number three. Da, 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 da. Number three, number three, number three, number three, da, da. number Raffy, three, number Torres. three. I see Torres and Rafi three. and Burnham Bone. and Janeway, da, 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 and Guinan. Oh, y'all are going to be so mad with us when this list is over. No, <laughs> okay. No. Number three, who said Michael Burnham? You are correct. Yes. Number three, our number three on the Sci Fi Sisters. Top 10 women of Trek is Michael Burnham because there ain't no way somebody going to be getting in on this list before Burnham. That's right. Well, there was ain't two, no but. no way we going to yeah. leave Burnham off this list. Y'all know who you talking to? That's right. <laughs> my sister. Michael Burnham Our is girl. the reason why we exist. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That character. So, I mean, we cannot understate the importance, I mean, overstate the importance of this woman playing this role at this time and how much she means to us. And I don't care what your feelings are about disco. Don't care. She's my girl. <laughs> you know, she's our girl because she's standing up for us and she's representing for us and she's doing it with grace, with dignity, with charm. And she's and her character is growing amazing so Love much her. so much she's a genius and they established that she was a genius when they said way back was this uh season one that she graduated top of her class on vulcan okay <laughs> so she outsmarted mm -hmm. she was smarter than all the vulcans in her class so that was her genius cred right there so yeah she is the smartest one in the room Sometimes you yep. have to be. So, yep. and, she, and she is our, as, as Tamia says, she is our reason for existing. The sci-fi sisters. That's right. So There were other people that we thought about, you know, that, but Michael get, takes it, even though she's new, her importance is too, is too big, you know, it's too deep, yeah. you know, um, who else has anything to say about we love her too, Captain we Michael love her Burnham? Too, Trek fan. I just, um, I think um, Michael Burnham means everything to Star Trek fans now that are looking at her the way Fran and um, Sabrina looked at Nichelle Nichols' Ahura when she came on. Because even though there is Black representation on TV, this is a meaningful Black representation for women. Mm -hmm. um, there are The girls nowadays, they're not, and I think we've talked about this before, they're not looking for just a face on the TV. They want to see you doing something and something meaningful. And she's doing it. You know, she is the captain. She is you know, going through heartache, going through whatever, you know, Saving being a universe. criminal, Saving being called galaxy. a criminal. All kinds of stuff, and these are things mm -hmm. that mean everything to these new, these new fans out there. You know, like I try to tell people, oh, I don't, I don't like Discovery, but you know what, Discovery's not for you. Maybe not for you. Um, just because you don't like this this series doesn't mean it's for you. There are people out there who adore this series, and that's cool yeah. because that's the way it should be. You know, um, there there's so many series we all love them, but Michael Burnham and Discovery, they made it possible for us to have the rest of this stuff coming on, Picard, Lower Decks, Prodigy, the uh, Brave New World. It was because of Discovery and Sonequa Martin-Green. From what I understand, they waited for her to be finished with whatever she was doing so she could be the, the dead people. The well, yeah. Dead folks, yeah. You know, so <laughs> I think when we say, oh, we don't really like Discovery, oh, that's okay. But it's not, it, maybe it's just not for you because it isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's for this new generation. And we need to realize that TNG wasn't for TOS fans. Mm -hmm. TNG was mm -hmm. for that generation. 
Um, and and DS9 was a, for a particular <laughs> segment of the population. I mean, come on, it's black track for a reason, you know. But I just want people to know how important her character is to young women and young men who see a captain because that's what they expect. They don't expect to see just anybody on TV. They want to they want to be represented, they want to be represented well. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. And she and she represents. Right. Yes. But we knew, but but we also knew that even before the series came on and they showed the trailer of mm-hmm. her and Captain Giorgio. Yep. And we got all this stuff from the peanut gallery because they showed a captain and her first officer, and they were women of color. Yep. Mm-hmm. There was the Asian captain yep. and the black first officer, and the show had not even premiered, and we got all this blowback and stuff. So mm-hmm. watch it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But you but, know, just, but that you know. that just what you had described, Fran. So in my house, um, that made the the most. You have no idea the impact it made it because my children are mixed. They are Chinese and black. So when they saw those two women on, on, on the on the screen in a in a Star Trek because they didn't watch Star Trek like they do now, and they but they knew mm-hmm. their parents did, mm-hmm. and the impact it made on those three children. That's right. Was you have no idea. That's why I try to tell people you, you, you cannot judge these shows because they're not what you are used to. When you were that age, you were into TNG yeah. and not TOS. You were into Voyager and not TNG. Nope. Most most people who like Voyager and DS9 maybe don't like T- TOS. And that's okay too. Just like us nowadays. There's, you know, that's why Prodigy is out because it's for younger population. So we need to get out of that mindset and understand that these people, they know what they're doing. I'm not a big fan of a lot of this stuff, but that doesn't matter because Star Trek is for us and it's supposed to continue. And that's why Michael Burnham's on the on the list. For me, and she deserves to be. And and and, and Sabrina. Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, no. <laughs> Everything was great. I love everything you guys are saying because Sonequa is the thing. Um, but for me, I love this uh, list and I love Sonequa on this list because she is truly, outside of being on the screen as Captain Burnham, she is such a great representative of Star Trek around the world in, in all of the other things that she does. I mean, she gets it. She understands where her history yeah. is of being the first black female captain of this and running this franchise. And yes, you would not have strange new worlds coming out if it wasn't for the fact that Sonequa Martin Green was successful in this show. Yep. So mm-hmm. without Sonequa and Disco, you would have no new Star Trek. Picard would that's be right. sitting at home. It wouldn't be nothing. So that's right. yes, that's all I got to say. Right. And Before that's yet another Sci-Fi Sisters mic drop. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Disco is the flagship. That's right. <laughs> Disco is the All flagship. Right. It is the flagship. Yeah. All right. Well, so there's our number three. Yep. Now we're moving on to number two. I wonder who you think that we think got a spot <laughs> over. <laughs> top Sonequa. C- C- top Sonequa. Top Sonequa, yeah. There's two who people at Top you Sonequa. And you heard our, you heard our uh, passion is please for Sonequa. So. We have two. We have, oh, yeah. Balana, Guinan, Guinan, <laughs> Janeway, Raffi. Oh, you guys are going to be so... Yeah. And I see we again. have two winners out there, Melissa oh, Longo what? and Anne Marie. Yeah. Oh, Anne Marie. Oh, wait, was she in the room? Was she in the room? <laughs> you guys, <laughs> did y'all were y'all eavesdropping number two? <laughs> they were left I can number understand two, Melissa, but... Lucille Ball, Lucille Ball. Without Lucy, there's no <laughs> trek. But it goes deeper than that, Yvette. So <laughs> I, I, I poor Sabrina, Sabrina, but I know Yvette, you, yeah. you were speaking really passionately about it. So Lucy is just my favorite, but the fact that Lucy as a woman, she, she was a, a famous, um, she had a famous TV show. Um, her and her husband bought out RKO records, um, RKO studios. I think it was RKO studios. 
And when Desi left, she took over everything. And she thought, hmm, this Star Trek thing sounds pretty good. Let me, let me, let me look at this. She brought, she gave us Star Trek and she gave us Mission Impossible. These two franchises are still around making billions of dollars. Okay. And this came from Lucille Ball, who was an a genius, especially a comedy genius. Um, and she had the foresight to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pat, I'm gonna do this. And she, you know, her and Desi were big into reruns, you know, and that's how Star Trek got the way. I mean, this this is how our Star Trek became our Star Trek. It's because mm -hmm. You know, it got famous in reruns. It was playing always, all, all the time. And Desi and 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 Lucille Ball were fa were famous for um, getting rerun reruns started. So they pioneered a, a genre of reruns. They they had a studio where they got people to come and 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 have all of their uh, shows done. I don't know. There's no this Star Trek without when, Lucy. Right. This is at a time when women were not running no. any studios any, in no. Hollywood. Nothing. No. She had the money because without, I don't care about the Federation, but the United States, you need some money. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Lucille Ball is yes, well, number two. Desi well, was gone. Desi was gone by Desi then. Was he was gone, gone from yeah. the company. Yep. They did, it was still it was Desi Lou, but he wasn't. He was no longer part of the company. Right. Right. Yep. So right. You know, she it was, was her a idea. Woman running, she running she everything in that world. It. Yeah, she was running it. So, yep. if you haven't seen um, being the Ricardos, I suggest you do watch it. It is a great. Um, it's a side. Yeah. side I, I, I liked it too. Yeah, I would, it was I really good. It has so nothing to do with Star Trek, but it's really good. Yeah. Well, it does because it has to do with because that Star Trek, I believe, is mentioned in is there. It, it is. I don't remember that. Yeah, when they just talk about that. in the end, I think in the end when she's they're talking about um, getting Desi Lu, uh, it is mentioned that and um, I think Mission Impossible. I think, but I've been watching a lot of uh, Lucy documentaries, so I could have yeah. got. <laughs> Cause there's another one. I just said, uh, Yvette, can you put up um, Sci-Fi Maven's latest comment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reason why syndication started with Lucy and Desi is because Desi had the foresight to film on videotape and no one else did. And videotape yeah. lasts. And mm -hmm. that's why he had the reruns. Everybody else retaped over their shows. So mm -hmm. he did not. And it was expensive, but that's what he did it. And that's why you still see I Love Lucy today. And you don't see any other shows from that era that's right. on mm -hmm. TV. And they they pioneered the three camera filming. Yeah, Desi, that was Desi. Desi did that was that, Desi. Yeah. Desi, Desi, well, Desi I, say, radio. I say they. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm just saying. It was on the Desi Lou, and <laughs> yep. she had yep. to agree. So yep. oh, yeah, oh yeah, definitely, because she was mm -hmm. you know they she were was both. Definitely, they were definitely partners. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I so, love like like Sabrina said, what woman was doing that at that time? You know, and she just you know she took it over. She had the money. She had the the place for them to do the productions and you know it's history we're we're blessed because because of lucy we have we That's have right. star trek because of lucy all right okay. so i see some people taking guests i don't have to prompt everybody to if take guests right. at, at who <laughs> number one is and all kinds of people. people are gonna riot if it's not uhura y'all are gonna Whoa. say yeah screw you sci-fi sisters we're not wow. Listening yeah, to you anymore, you're gonna yeah. throw down your earbuds and oh, storm out of the room. It's gonna be I chaos in the it. streets, it's gonna be like the melee. The, the sci fi sisters crashed the internet. It wasn't the who was number mad, one. Mad people, mad people. Our well, get one. mad, be mad, be glad, <laughs> be mad, be glad. <laughs> Our number one top 10 from the sci fi sisters. Star Trek top 10, the women is dun, 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 Uhura. That's no, right. Of course it's Uhura, of course. silly people. Who else would it be? Who else would it be? Come on. Who else would it be? She's our personal goddess, you know? <laughs> it's like all hail the queen. You know, there can be no other. She is everything for us. You know, without her, there's no Michael. Yep. That's Straight right. up. 
That's right. Straight up. And without no, her, and no, her, there was no diversity. <laughs> right. And, and without her, no elder black uh uh trekkies. Yeah. Oh, I just told on myself. Okay. <laughs> You've been told. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, people. I tell people, and I don't understand why they don't get it, but, you know, I'm like, I'm a Trekkie, you know, I got Lieutenant Uhura on my license plates and all that, and I'm like, you don't look like a Trekkie, how do you, how do you live up a Trekkie, you know, you know, like, well, okay, I don't live in my mother's basement, and I'm like, you know, I am a nerd, I, I'll, I'll give you that, however, when I tell them the, the real fast story of me being 11 years old and looking up and seeing this woman on the screen, not in a subservient role, who's talking and people are actually listening to her. Mm-hmm. She's gorgeous. She's smart. She's articulate. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So at 11, 1966, y'all. So what else would I be but a Trekkie? Mm-hmm. And I always centered her. When it, either, if she was on the screen or not, I, it was always you her me and my grandma. My grandmama didn't have a clue as to what was going on. And sometimes I didn't either. However, I love uh, uh, Star Trek. And if when you look back on it, she was placed strategically behind the captain. So when you saw the captain, Kirk, basically you saw her too. Whether mm-hmm. she was just up there pushing buttons or had the thing sticking out of her ear. She was visible most of the time when she was on there. I love Miss Nichols. I love Miss Nichols. I, I just yeah. do. And um, she influenced my life. You know, she, she just influenced me. Little nerdy was, colored girl. <laughs> she, was, uh, she was everything. You know, yeah. she was, uh, boy, how do you encapsulate her, right? You know, like she... She strove to be more like when you, those moments in the movies when we got to see her do more than than just you know put mm-hmm. a hand up to the ear, mm-hmm. you know. Um, she um, she was uh, yes, the Louise. woman that I could look up to that make it possible for me, you know, to know that life outside, like greatness in life, was achievable. Yeah, yeah. It's you know I'm from the time with Fran too, so I was ten, and this this was absolutely major. And I think we've said it a lot of times, and I think people have heard us say it over and over again, but the depth of it, I don't think people really get. Because at this time, science fiction was really just for kids on television. It it was a kind of a joke. It's not what it is now by any stretch of the imagination. And it was always white men. That's it. And it was just, you know, blobby aliens or somebody was going to kill somebody or, you know, guys had bazookas and they were going to shoot the blob or whatever, whatever. So this whole show, not just horror, but the whole show's concept was mind boggling that it was mm-hmm. a future and it was clean and bright. And we were doing things that wasn't just like a one off. We got to kill the DMA. I'm going to let that go. But it was a whole big thing was going on and we loved it. And this black woman was right smack dab in the center of it. Like you said, Fran, and you couldn't take that camera off her because Kirk had it. There was Kirk. There was a horror. There was Kirk. There was a horror. And we were looking for her. So it it was major. And I really do appreciate everything that she did in the NASA program. I, I, I followed that so much. The whole space program beyond what she did for Star Trek. She is absolutely a gift to this country, and we wouldn't have a lot of things. We wouldn't have all the representation in the space shuttle program and everything else that we have without Miss Nichols. And um, yes, she is a huge, huge influence to me. Because you know, and, the and I just want to—I I was about to say—I just want to say that, like you know, you can hear in depth all of our thoughts about Miss Nichols. We did a show about her, so you can go to our website if you're interested. Uh, and catch that show that we did about her. Uh, Kurtzman tells the story of Mae Jameson, and they were somewhere together. And he asked her, how did she become an a astronaut? You know, she was the first black woman in space. And she said, Uhura, I saw Uhura. So she has, uh, she has a lot of influence, you know, uh, with in real life, as Sabrina said. So. Right. And, as and 
as Porsche is saying, yes, we had quite a few people on this list. Luce, we are sorry. Bellana is not on the list. We fought for Bellana. I'm telling you, I don't know why she's not on the list, but there was only 10 spots. And well, Luce, I'm sorry. Luce, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> look, there was a lot of people that should have been on the list, but there yeah. was only, I mean, we, we actually squeezed 11 people onto uh, a top 10 list. So there was, there was a lot of people. I mean, I, I mean, you know, that we definitely wanted on the list. I mean, but it, it's just not enough room for everyone. No. Well, no, technically, we, we, all, we keep doing this. <laughs> technically, we, we only all, had seven spaces because when we sat down, we knew three people were going to be on the list. Yeah. We knew. And I said, let's just write down these three people because I know all three of all four of us know these people mm -hmm. are going to be on this list. Yeah. And that was, of mm -hmm. course, Yuhura, Micah, and Kira. Mm -hmm. right. So technically, we had seven spaces left. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we. Um, there's talk of doing a, a part two, listen to the podcast, you know, <laughs> because there was so, because there are so many incredible women that we couldn't fit on the list. I know some of y'all, I've seen it in the chat, are pretty miffed that Janeway is nowhere on this list. Oh, yeah. Um, hey. Oh, well, you know, she's oh, okay. with, with the sci fi sisters. I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there, like, we have a little bit of time. I mean, we have, I mean, Bolana was definitely in the in the room. Yeah, they were. Uh, she was. Know, they were in the room for sure. Was Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the room. They was on the list. You know, so you know, <laughs> she was the definitely wife. there. Um, Captain um, Admiral Cornwell was there. Yeah. Oh. And she just missed the list. Oh, man. yeah. We were fighting mm -hmm. hard. We were fighting for there. Admiral Cornwell because she is, oof, I love that. I love that character. So We were fighting for, uh, some of us were fighting for Raffi. Yeah. Really yeah. Hard. I was fighting hard for Raffi. Yeah. Yes, you yep. were. Yep. Yes, you were. But, yeah, but I don't want to give them. Hopefully, hopefully Bacardo. I, I was fighting for Keiko. I was fighting for Keiko. I fought yeah. for Keiko too. Yeah, you fought for Keiko. Keiko, <laughs> mother that she is. Listen, that you know, but I mean, through it, Keiko. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun to try to um, to come up with this list. That's for sure. You know, and I was surprised by what we. Uh, how the list actually finally came out, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when it came down to it. Yeah, I think, uh, Luce, we do need uh, parts two and three <laughs> of <Yeah>. this list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because it, how do you put it down? I mean, but the top 10, the top 10 is set in stone. Sci-Fi Sisters top 10 is set in stone, baby. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to take some time for that to change. Some of these, some of these women that we talked about, like that we just discussed, they simply have... With the compared to the gravitas of some of the other women, the depth of history in in Star Trek, they just couldn't make it up there. It's not because we don't like them, you know. Um, they just couldn't crack the top ten. But they're they're in the room, like you said, they're in the room. Yep. You know, <laughs> and space you all, parents accepted. If you all had been a what, what's that, a fly on the wall in the room? Ooh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> we <laughs> put ourselves through it. Yes, Aaron Frazier. <laughs> Roxana made the list. But not as Roxana, as Major. As Major. As Major. Yes. We will never <laughs> so that is my favorite all... part of my J-Way. <laughs> okay, you guys, we hope you all really uh, we thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, it's been really fun. And um, Chat Pack, our paws is strong. Uh, we love you all. We love everybody from the mothership who is here and from Camp Kittimer that's here. And um, so thank you all. And Women at Warp, we love you all for hanging out with us today. Um, uh, check buddy? us out at uh, SciFiSisters.com. Check us out on Facebook um, at, for the uh, on the on on our page or at the Sci-Fi Sisters Mothership. All of that is scrolling on the bottom. And, um, and check out our podcast everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are there, baby. <laughs> we love you thanks Anne marie thanks melissa thanks the Sev uh, seventh rule for asking hey. us to be a part of this we love you all so much we out hashtag sarcastic vulcan salute Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. plug the merch what merch oh yeah plug the merch. what merch i'm not wearing merch today we have merch oh my god we have merch in our store we have t-shirts and bags and everything plug Bye. the merch